Hey folks, Andy here, thanks for joining me. Right, this is a little trick that I thought about after I finished the recent tube taming series of videos. So it probably slots in between part one and part two, so I'm gonna pitch it out there as tube taming 1.5. Hope it could be of some use. It's aimed at anybody who has got a load box. Now a load box is something that you plug the speaker output or your amp into, and it takes the speaker level signal and drops it. In some cases, it'll be part of an attenuator where you can turn down the amount of signal that's getting through to your speakers to drop the volume that you're hearing. But in some cases, it's more restricted in what it does than that. The box I have, my Sir Reactive Load, is a very high quality reactive load. It appears to the amplifier like a real speaker cab so that the amplifier sees the correct impedance curve and pushes the signal out in the right way to give the proper sound of the amp. But because it's notoriously difficult to combine a great reactive load with an adjustable attenuator, Sir so decided to go down the route of making one trick pony that does its one trick really, really well. So all it does is it takes your speaker level signal and it drops it down to line or instrument level, no ability to turn down your speakers. There are other devices out there that have some limitations on them. Um, two notes do the Captor X, which is a reactive load with an attenuator built in, but it only has zero minus 20, and I think it's minus 38 dB settings. Now minus 20 is a big attenuation, and minus 38 is colossal. It's the sort of thing that's bringing your stage rig down to, let's say, whisper quiet levels. Not very useful if all you want to do is to get a little bit of the sort of upper reaches of the signal just to drop the level down a little bit for stage use or for recording or something like that. If you just want to tame things, rein them in a little bit to make them more usable. So here's the trick. You plug a speaker cabinet into the back of your amplifier. The signal from the amp goes out into the speakers and is turned into sound and heat. If you plug in two speaker cabs with the same impedance, making sure that the combined impedance is what your amp expects to see, you split the signal in two. Half of it goes to one speaker, half goes to the other. That doesn't mean that you're going to get the same amount of sound out of each speaker. That depends on the uh, things like the sensitivity of the actual speakers within the cabinet, but certainly you're splitting the power. So it's a really simple idea. If you have a load box that will appear to your amp like a speaker cab, plug in one speaker cab and one load box. You don't need any of the connectors on the load box. You're not taking any signal out of it for recording or reamping or anything like that, unless you really want to. But what you are doing is you're splitting the signal that's coming out of your amplifier and you're simply wasting half of it in the load box. It's just converting to heat and probably a few rumbles and whirs and clicks and things like that as well. Now, not great for your electricity bill, not great for global warming, but it does mean that you've just taken your 100 or 50 watt amplifier and dropped it down to a 50 or 25 watt amplifier. Like I say, if you're playing on stage and you just need to bring the levels down by, you know, 3 dB, something like that, it's a great way to do that. few things to bear in mind. One, dropping the power by half does not reduce the volume by half. Go and take a look at video one in the tube taming series if you need to catch up on that. Two, you do need to make sure that the combined impedances of your cabinet and your load box are what your amp is expecting to see. We don't want to be doing damage to uh, expensive pieces of kit here. Now, I know this is something that can be a bit confusing. I've seen quite a lot of explanations online that don't really explain it. So maybe I'll throw a video up soon, just sort of stripping away some of the, the mystery and mystique about the impedance issues with amplifiers. But in the meantime, just make sure that your impedances are right. And three, make sure that you use speaker grade cable, not like instrument cable or a patch cables, because you can be pushing some serious current down there, depending on what sort of output you've got from your amp. So there you go. If you have a box lying around that doesn't work as an attenuator, but does work as a load for the sake of a couple of cables and making sure you understand what impedance is supposed to do, 
you've basically got a half power amp with no side effects that you get like pulling tubes things like that from it okay that's it simple as that go give it a go let me know what you think i'm andy picker i'll see you next time oh and if this is useful maybe give us a thumbs up that's very nice hit the subscribe button dingle little bell so you get notified when the next one comes out see you next time